We're here to talk about Dave Campbell's Texas football, though we don't own the football. We're just going to talk about some games in college football with some burning questions for week seven of the college football season. Where are we starting, Pickle? Up first, how about we start tomorrow night as Marshall travels down to Denton to take on North Texas 6 p.m. on Friday. Do you buy that the Mean Green offense has figured itself out? Uh, I don't know why we would think that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, do I buy? I was like, I've never bought it, so no. <laughs> so it's, it's one of you the can't return that, like, something that they, you never bought. Exactly. Because the numbers recently offensively have been like, okay. Sure. But the thing for me is, I think a lot of these, this number, a lot of this is, is window dressing numbers. Mm-hmm. A lot of these are garbage. It's time garbage numbers. time because it goes back to the same thing that we've talked about week in and week out with North Texas, which is they fall behind huge mm-hmm. so early and they have to chase, and so they're facing a lot of you know, you know, cover three offense defenses that are just like, sure, you want to take a, a seven yard gain, fine, right. like as long as we're killing time. I don't, I, I think the offense is better mm-hmm. than it was maybe at times this year. But I also just don't think that it's like I think it's 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 one of those things that the numbers are a bit deceiving. Where mm-hmm. yeah, they put up forty some thirty something points against Missouri last week, but that's because right. Missouri was taking their foot off the gas because they're up thirty one seven and a half. Times. Right, it was like twenty one points in the fourth quarter. I yeah. think for North Texas and like, I mean they're they're good at running the ball, but I don't know they're they're not great at it. I think they average just under five yards a carry, which I mean of course you have mm-hmm. Trey Sigers, of course sure why not, um, but. I don't know. I'm I think not it's. That. I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I'm not impressed with what they're. No. I mean, I don't know. Marshall does everything better than them yeah. in, in offense. I don't think either teams are either teams great, but what North Texas is kind of good at, they're already. I think pretty it's. Great at. I think it's pretty telling. I don't know. This is. You know, I don't put. A, you don't put a ton of stock into the into the betting lines. We'll get to another thing that I think. Also, oh, did I say bit. Sigurds? I meant Tory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but they were. But but I mean, Mar- this is an average Marshall team, right? right? I think it's fair to say they're average, and they are 11 point favorites on the road. That's. That's telling, and I think the clock is ticking for Seville Trail, unfortunately. Yeah. What's next, Pickle? Up next, let's go with why is Texas about a touchdown favorite over an unbeaten OSU team? That that game happening 11 a.m. on Saturday. Um, I think I'll answer this, and that's because I think this is a real – I think this is an Oklahoma State team – that yes, they're undefeated, mm-hmm. and they got a good win over Baylor, and you play the teams that are put in front of you. But I also think this may be a team that's on borrowed time. Sure. Uh, and I think Vegas kind of sniffs that out. Um, they are a team that I think Spencer Sanders, as a passer, has, I don't know if he's regressed, but he certainly mm-hmm. hasn't grown, I don't think. Right. Um, they're really reliant on running the ball. They do it pretty well. And obviously, Texas was not great at stopping the run last week against Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, this is a really intriguing matchup. I think that, you know, I think Vegas obviously likes, ba- or likes Texas mm-hmm. and likes what they do and thinks that they're a little bit more battle-tested. They probably do have, I mean, I guess Oklahoma State has the win over Baylor. That's probably their most impressive win of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. The thing about Oklahoma State, though, is that their defense is pretty good. It's really pretty good. darn good. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to test Texas in, in a way that they probably haven't been tested since... Arkansas, you know, as far as Probably. defensive intensity is concerned. Probably. Um, but I, I, I also think that this is this is more about what Oklahoma State and some doubts that people have against about Oklahoma State than it is about Texas. Yeah, I think that Oklahoma State's defensive line and their front seven is really good. I think that that's where they're going to win this game. It's a strength on strength matchup. I think that where the difference comes for me is I think this offense for Oklahoma State is very combustible. Mm-hmm. Um, Texas. Against Texas, you, you can be you can control the line of scrimmage. I believe you can attack that secondary. I think they can also capitalize on mistakes, as we saw in the first half against Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma State is very vulnerable to that. Spencer mm-hmm. Sanders is somebody who can who we know is capable of two to three interceptions in a game. They turn the ball um, over a lot. They turn the ball over a lot. They shouldn't have won that. Ba- uh, they shouldn't have won that Baylor no. game. Uh, I think that his, he, Spencer Sanders had three three mm-hmm. interceptions in that game. If they do that against Texas, a better offense, I think they can win, and I think that's where this uh, line comes in. I wouldn't be shocked if this is the week that uh, they finally stumble. Yeah, I think so. What's next, Pickle? Up next, let's go with number 21, Texas A&M, taking on Missouri 11 a.m. on a Saturday. Is Zach Calzada's big game last week against Alabama a flash in the pan, or is it the new normal? I think the game plan should be the new normal. Yeah. <laughs> because that was a game plan where – uh, I don't know if you read Travis Brown's article from College uh, Brian College Station Eagle, um, where he talked about the uh, the play calling for Jimbo Fisher up until last week hadn't been different from when Kellen Mond was there. Mm-hmm. They passed about 59 percent with Kel- with Kellen Mond. They were passing about 58 percent with Ke- Zach Calzada. That's not how you win those games. 
Last week, they basically had a 50-50 split, and even if you took seven of the passes that he threw, they went to Devon Chan and uh, Isaiah Spiller. So basically, they had the running backs going for over 50% of the of the play calling. Those those running those those short passes yes. that coaches spread coaches will tell you they kind of take the place of running game. 100%. And so that's the play that that's it right there. And then he can hit Anaya Smith. He can hit J- uh, uh, Jalen Weidemeyer across the middle, and it can show off a little bit more of that arm. And, you know, he, had, he took a big hit, of course, that almost knocked him out of the game to, went on that touchdown to Anaya Smith. But it's that arm and that kind of courage that he has. That's his strength. That's the game plan. Like, it's not that he it was thrown to 40 times and all over the field. They balanced it for him. And I think that's, that's, what you, that's the game plan that they have to do. So here's, here's the issue with, with declaring whether or not Zach Calzada is, this is the new normal or flash in the pan. Mm-hmm. Is we're not going to find out much about this this week. Not this Missouri's week. Missouri's defense is butt, guys. Yes. It's <laughs> real bad. As somebody who's watched a lot of Missouri football, let yeah. me tell you, it's very bad. Um, and so he could put up some gaudy numbers against them, and it may not mean a whole lot. This is probably the worst defense that they've faced since when they played New Mexico. Right. And he looked, oh, I, I, and I remember coming out of the New Mexico game and be like, oh, well, look, he put up some nice numbers. But then you kind of dig in and you're like, oh, this mm-hmm. maybe isn't, isn't what we thought it was. This could be a situation like that. Uh, we just won't know until he faces teams that are in his weight class. Right now, even on the road, Mizzou is not in A&M's weight class, and so yeah. I just don't—I don't foresee this necessarily being particularly telling about about Zach Calzada. Uh, but listen, he now gets a statue built for him in, in right. College Station. So good for him. <laughs> What's next, Pickle? Up next, we've got the Troy Trojans taking on Texas State, 2 p.m. on Saturday. Troy favored by seven and a half on the road. Make a play on the over under 48. Under. Under. Way uh, under. Way under. Okay. <laughs> way under. Because here's, here's the thing about this game, and I was so interested to talk about this, because yeah. I think that in a lot of respects, Tex- this is going to sound extremely insulting, mm-hmm. Texas State is like a poor man's Troy. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, because they are, Texas State's defense, I think, is okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's at least a strength of the team. The defense is, 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 is better than it's better than the offense. Not their down defense, definitely. Right. They can't right. get off the field. But uh, um, their offense is it's better than their offense. And same fair. way with Troy. Yeah. Troy has forgotten how to move the ball. Yeah. But their defense is keeping them in games, and their defense is is pretty good. Their defense is yeah. Their defense definitely. they this is take the big under. This yeah. is not going to be a good offensive game. But the difference is. Troy's pass rush is going to get there. Troy, I believe, is number one in sack rate, number one in sack percentage. Um, I think they average about five a game. And so Brady McBride's already somebody who probably holds on to the ball a little too much. Probably uh, the pass protection is not great for him. And so I think there's a little bit of uh, hearing footsteps. And so he might roll himself into sacks. It's a bad recipe. I think this is a week where it's just an ugly, ugly game. I wouldn't be shocked if this is a 21 to 10, mm-hmm. 8, uh, 17 to 7 type mm-hmm. game. And it's, yeah, no, take the way under. Yeah, I saw, I saw the over under 48. And basically, what, what they're, what the, the assumed line, I guess, would be, so, or the, what they're thinking like, what, 28, 20? 24 yeah. around then, something yeah. like that, like 28, 20? Right. It's like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't see either of them really. It's like there. they looked at like Jake Spavado and they looked at Troy and it's like, oh, offense. Yeah. And it's like forty-eight, no, not this. No. Forty-two, no. which is crazy because forty-eight's not that high. No, not it's a big not. number. All right, what's next, pickle? Up next, let's dial back to last week for a second. Baylor took down West Virginia forty-five to twenty. So, with what happened last week to Baylor's offense, is that sustainable against number nineteen BYU at two thirty p.m. on Saturday? Yeah, a Big Twelve opener for BYU. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> they, come to, they come to Waco. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, wh- I'm going to sound like a broken record when I talk about Baylor. When the offensive line plays well and they operate the scheme that Jeff Grimes wants to operate, mm-hmm. the offense is pretty good. Yeah. When they don't and they get, they get bullied up front, they look bad. That's mm-hmm. what happened against Oklahoma State. Uh, they got bullied up front, mm-hmm. and they couldn't, they couldn't open up creases for that kind of wide zone offense. Um, they instead were now, you know, last week against West Virginia, they won up front and yeah. they protected Gary Bohannon, who I thought had his best game as a Baylor pair, and it all worked. Is that sustainable? I mean, we'll find out against BYU. BYU is, I think, overcooked at 19. Yeah, I don't think they're think the 19th so. best team in the country. Yeah, me neither. Um, honestly, this would be one of those things that if you flip the rankings, I'd kind of believe it. I'd be mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, if you want to say Baylor, I don't know if they're a top 20 team, but sure. if you want to say they're a top 30 team, I'd believe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Baylor can win this game if they win up front, plain and simple. That's, that's, that's the name of the game here. Right. I think that 
I don't know. I'm, I'm a believer in the Baylor offense because I think they've only stumbled that one game. Mm -hmm. It was against a very good Oklahoma State defense. Other than that, they have put, put up the numbers. Their offensive line has been well, After consistent. week one, because Texas State sure, challenged fair enough, them too. Fair enough, sure. After that week one blunder, and again, week ones are always weird. Yeah. And so I think I'm buying into this. Uh, I agree with you. I don't think BYU is great. I think that they did lose a lot, so I think it is impressive what they're doing this mm -hmm. year so far. But their best wins are Utah, which, of course, Charlie Brewer was still starting quarterback, and that offense was not good at the time. Speaking of Baylor. And, yeah, and speaking of Baylor. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Arizona State, which I don't know how good Arizona State is. They're either. weird. So they're ranked, but... <laughs> I don't know how much that really weighs. And so those are the two best wins, an offense that got better immediately after playing BYU and then Arizona State. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's a real kind of litmus test for Baylor. It, it, if, they're, if they are what we think they could be, sure. they should win this game yeah. and probably buy about a touchdown like Vegas thinks. Mm -hmm. If they're not, they could absolutely lose this game because, you know, BYU's defense can challenge you in, in, in a couple of ways. It'll be, it'll be very interesting in, in this one. I'm, I'm excited about this one on, uh, on ESPN. This is where Mike Craven's going to be. There you go. What's next, Pickle? Up next, let's head over to Texas Tech taking on an awful Kansas team um, in Lawrence, 3 p.m. on a Saturday. It's no surprise here. Matt Wells is on the hot seat. Yeah. Is there anything he can do on Saturday to change that? Uh, I mean, it can make it worse, I guess. He, he, yeah, like, <laughs> this is a one direction. You could type. go up yeah, in flames. Right, right. <laughs> it's like you're either on the hot seat or you're boiling. Like, yes. it's, <laughs> you, it doesn't get cooler you're scalding. if you beat Kansas. Congratulations. <laughs> no. Like, I don't know. Like, if you struggle, then it's like, oh, hello. If they go out there, because I was, I was thinking about this. Yeah. Obviously, look, if he loses to Kansas, they may just leave him in Lawrence. Sure. You know what I mean? If sure. they lose some, if they lose a ding dong game to Kansas. Um, then they may, may just leave him in Lawrence. Yes. Um, I'll make was, that call. He's gone. I was if they lose to Kansas, he's gone. Yes. yes. Like, like, like <laughs> yeah. walking signs, off the he field. Signs, he signs his own death warrant there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I was thinking, like, what if Tech beats him, like, 66-7? to seven? Like, I talk, I think it, like, a vintage Mike Leach just butt-kicking nope. that he used to put on some of the worst teams in the Big 12. Mm. What if they do that? What if, they, what if it all comes together? I don't think it necessarily changes things, mm -hmm. but at least... When's their bye week? Uh, or do they already no have idea. it? Because it like, might secure him through the rest yeah, of the season, maybe that I would say. Maybe. Maybe. I mean like like I don't know. We're 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 dealing with extremes here. If they beat, if they if they score seventy on Kansas, like it's, I don't know, they're still two weeks removed from getting seventy by Texas, yeah, yeah. and fifty two from TCU, yeah. and it's like if they have one, basically they have to me they have one more prove it game against Baylor, yeah. And if they get smoked by Baylor, mm -hmm. that's th their tech, Texas, Baylor, TCU. You lose, you get smoked by all three of those your teams. State teams. Yeah, the you're teams done. You're theoretically recruiting against. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I don't. I, I, it doesn't matter if they blow out Kansas. They can put. It can be eighty nothing. I just I okay. think it doesn't matter. I think you're right, but we, well, I think we all agree that if they lose, if they lose to Kansas, no, it's, it's done. He it's can ju he can just look for rentals. Yeah. <laughs> right. What's next, Pickle? Up next, a Conference USA matchup between your Rice Owls and UTSA. Boy. Spread at 18 in a half there on Saturday. Is there suddenly reason for concern against UTSA's defense? For UTSA's defense, rather. Uh, no, not this week. Um, yeah, not this week. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, this is a UTSA defense, or UTSA defense, I think, last week against uh, uh, Western Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of this stems from, is because they got, they, got, they got torched by, by Western Kentucky. Right. But here's the thing about Western Kentucky. They're doing that to everybody. Yeah. They are absolutely smoking everybody uh, and, and there with uh, UTSA's deep, or rather with uh, that Bailey Zappi and, and the whole Houston Baptist offense yes. that they brought over. Yes. Um, and, you know, look, the week before against a bad UNLV team, mm -hmm. they did, you know, they look awesome. Right. I don't think it'll be a problem this week against Rice. We're thinking big picture here. Yeah. Maybe if they have to run into, like, a UAB. But I also don't know how many high-powered offenses are on Conference USA. Yeah, no, not, not this year specifically. I think when you look at Rice... There, it's gonna be it's it's a nice change. It's gonna be a nice change of pace for UTSA, right? Mm -hmm. They go against a, a, a Western Kentucky team where they very much were okay with bend don't break, mm -hmm. right? Keep everything in front of you, make sure just get one or two mistakes, which is exactly what happened. They got a pick uh, late to win it. Mm -hmm. They forced a field goal on the opening drive, and that was basically the game for for UTSA. Um, now they go against a Rice team that's struggling offensively. They're still really trying to figure out what's happening there. Uh, obviously, they Rice would love to control the game defensively mm -hmm. and play within the hashes. I think UTSA is more than happy to do that, especially a week after playing against four or five wide every single play. So, 
I, if there is concern, I don't think we'll have to worry about it now. Yeah. You know, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. This they, they get the, the defense at least gets a stay of execution. Sure. You know, down the road, maybe they run into like a, you know, a, a red hot UTEP team that sure. can challenge them. Go Miners. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's, that's, that's there here or there. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm not pushing the panic button on UTSA's defense yet. Not yet. Uh, if they are going to stumble, it's probably going to be at the expense of the defense, but mm-hmm. we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. What's next, Pickle? Up next, let's head to our small school game of the week, UT Permian Basin at Angelo State, 6 p.m. on a Saturday. Um, are you buying UT Permian Basin as a legit Lone Star Conference contender? I think so. I think that they've already got a win over West, West Texas A&M. That was really big for them. The Lone Star Conference now probably goes through Midwestern State since mm-hmm. they have wins over both, I believe it's West Texas and Commerce, which mm-hmm. were the, the, the two front runners. Um, so, but I think UT Permian Basin under Coach Justin Kerrigan is, is certainly a team to be reckon, reckoned with. You know, it's interesting. This is a team that Justin Kerrigan is an offensive guy, and their offense has been good. Clayton Roberts, the quarterback there from Houston St. Pius, is doing, doing well there. But it's been the defense that I think has really stood out to them, to me, and, and has put the Falcons on the map. Going on the road to Angelo is not fun. Uh, uh, Angelo State drive. Is, difficult, <laughs> is difficult to beat at home at, at, at Angelo Stadium. So it'll be certainly a test for them. But if they can pass this, then suddenly maybe they become that chief challenger in the Lone Star Conference, which suddenly feels much more wide open. Big is, game, Lone Star Conference Network, it'll be a lot of fun. Is he still rocking? Is Kerrigan still rocking the mullet? Is he still rocking the mullet? <laughs> just, just double checking. The There's Pope's, the real let's question. Check, let's check if the Pope's still Catholic. Catholic. Still <laughs> it, you know what I mean? What's next, Pickle? Up next, we head over to the Big 12 TCU at number four, Oklahoma, 13 and a half point favorite there in Norman, 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Over under again, 175.5 rushing yards for TCU. They turned it on last week. Yeah. I th- oh, man. Tougher test this, this week. Was, uh, so I made this line. Yeah, I, ma- I put you made the, this line. I put this line out here, and I'll tell you what, I, what it came down to. Uh, TCU, when they've been good, and that, you know, when they've committed to the run, they've averaged about 250 yards per game on the ground. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma gives up about an average of 100 yards on the ground. Right. So I split the difference. Mm-hmm. 175 and a half. What happens when strength means strength? Yeah. Um, part of me thinks, hopefully, that TCU has figured out that the best way to win ball games is to uh, just feed Zach Evans and Kendra Miller. Yeah. And just keep doing that. Um, Will they do it, and especially if they fall behind? Mm-hmm. Because everyone was going gaga over them running for so much over Tech, but they were also playing from ahead. Yes. And so if they get stopped for a two-yard gain, okay, no big deal. The clock still runs. Right. If Oklahoma jumps out on them and, you know, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to hear from Lincoln Riley uh, in, in his media availability, hopefully, yeah, hopefully which I presume still... is still happening, Right. Um, <laughs> you know, what, what their quarterback situation is going to be like. But if they fall behind, does he stay com- – does Gary Patterson and, and uh, the offensive staff, do they stay committed to that style of, of running game? Because I do think that's their best path forward. Sure. But I also know that some coaches can get a little bit of uh, jumpy whenever they fall behind. Yeah. Um, I do wonder if Gary Patterson wants wants this to be the Zach Evans, Kendra Miller offense, or if he wants a balance, right? Because that's where they've kind of fallen behind is when they've tried to make a balance of it as opposed to leaning on the run game, which I think is their strength. It happened against Texas. They ran the ball very effectively, but they insisted that Max Duggan needed 30 whatever attempts he ended up having. Um, and if, but if, I don't know. I don't think Max Duggan's a bad quarterback, but he's very much not somebody that, in my opinion, you should base an offense around. Yeah, and he's so, not Zach Evans. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Texas, Texas has Bijan Robinson. Yeah, and I think we all agree that Texas's offense should be based around Bijan Robinson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why it'll be different at TCU with with Zach Evans. If you look at the numbers, Zach Evans average averages more yards than Bijan Robinson yeah. since last year. Since they both got more carries at the tail end of last year, he's averaged roughly a yard more than Bijan Robinson. And it's like he's they're just like no, no, not now. Yeah. Not now. You know, I don't know. Sticking I don't know what with my it ways. Is. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what it is. And and you mentioned Kendra Miller, who's also averaging over five yards, I believe, a carry. I don't know why you just don't base the offense around these two guys. Mm-hmm. If in an ideal world, yes, this would be hit the over. Yeah. But I don't know if they uh, hit that just because I don't know if I they worry, stick with the run long enough. Exactly right. I worry they're going to abandon the run if they get down like 28-10. And they're right. like, okay, we got to ask Max Duggan to throw the ball 40 times, which is not where they want to live. By the way, shout out OU Daily, uh, who figured out that Caleb Williams is the starting quarterback for Oklahoma, thanks to their very savvy reporting from a public building spying into Oklahoma. Practice. That's what journalism is, folks. <laughs> Lincoln Riley can get God bless binoculars. <laughs> and finally, Pickle. Finally. 
the game of the week easily there. Louisiana Tech, six and a half point favorites over those five and one UTEP Miners, 8 p.m. on a Saturday. And the question for you guys, is Jacob Cowling the most underrated receiver in the nation? So I don't know every receiver in the nation, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. That's what, you know what? He I don't took listen all to of this. his poker chips. I'm listening chips to my heart. <laughs> I'm listening to my gut. Okay? <laughs> That's what my heart and my gut say. Jacob Cowling's awesome. Yeah, Okay. He's He's been such an important part of what they do. He is, I believe, 10th in the nation in receiving yards per game. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been a stud for them. Like, yeah. where would they be without Jacob Cowing? Um, I think he's super underrated, and people should be talking more about him. I will, I will take your Jacob Cowing and raise you as Justin Garrett. Is oh, he yeah. is he the other is 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 he the most underrated uh, receiver on his team? Yeah, Justin true. Garrett's right across from him, and also big capable of big plays. Uh, I was looking at the numbers for UTEP's offense, and of course we, we like we know what they want to do, right? They want to run the ball a little bit. They know that uh, 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 Gavin Hardison can go vertical, mm -hmm. and their big playability is insane. It is. Other than Air Force and Army, which again, when they when those two teams dial it up, <laughs> it's something deep. It's a trick play, right? Exactly, yeah. right. Yeah, it's a exactly. trick play that goes for like twenty five yards. Other than those two teams, UTEP is the most explosive in terms of yards per per completion. Like, yeah, they and and they're not a team that it's not a trick play. You know they're going to throw it mm -hmm. when they do, and they just hit big plays because they have a big armed quarterback in Gavin Hardison, and they have two big play receivers in Jacob Cowing and Justin Garrett. And anytime they get the ball, it's going to be for something insane, thirty yards, sixty yards whatever they're insane it's a fun offense and i think they have the most underrated receiving duo in the country yeah. all right i'm gonna put you on the spot though all right utep has six games to win one yeah. okay yeah. to get bowl eligible yeah. does it happen this week i think it happens this week i think it happens this week. i think it happens this week because go. there's a t and i think it's a two-game skid coming up unfortunately it's fau utsa so. very rough yep um and then they i think you know unt rice to to end it so you know there's some winnable games yep. in there as well but I think Sun Bowl, hype is on. At night. God, at I night. wish we could go. Let's go. <laughs> can I we, think it happens. Can we Let's get a go. flight? Let's go. Go Miners. Yeah. Uh, we are, we are, we're a Miners podcast now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and those are your college football burning questions. Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at texasfootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out texasfootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at texasfootball.com slash subscribe.